Well, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray that you and your family, friends and loved ones are staying safe, but also growing in your faith during this uh, coronavirus period that we're in. I want to take a few moments today and share with you uh, an exciting new expansion of our Benevolence Fund that will be beginning immediately. You know, over the last couple of weeks, I actually had conversations with uh, several of our church members, and they just expressed a concern and a burden in their heart for members of our congregation here at Fairview that may be or might in the near future be experiencing some financial hardships due to the coronavirus, whether they own a small business or they are just financially on the edge with their employment or their finances, and uh, they may just be coming under some hardships. Then they were also reflecting, they, they said to me, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be receiving a stimulus check from the government, and we're blessed, our, our income is fixed, or we have enough income to meet our bills, to, to buy food, to take care of ourselves and family. And we were just wondering, is there a way that we could donate, that we could give some or all of this stimulus money to others who may just have a greater need than we? I was very humbled. I was very moved by their compassion, by the spiritual gifts of, of mercy, the spiritual gifts of caring, spiritual gift of giving that were in their hearts. So I told them that I would think about it, pray about it, see what uh, we could do. And so I did. I also then consulted with our deacon chair, Rosemary Blankenship, and I offered a, uh, a suggestion that we expand our benevolence fund, that we open up to, to members of our congregation or anyone who would like to give and designate, uh, whether it's part of their stimulus money they receive or maybe some change they find around the house or a dollar or two these days to our Benevolence Fund to help those who are financially challenged during this time. We uh, ran this past our deacon body they all came back and agreed this would be a great idea. They felt like it was from the Lord. So I want to announce the expansion of this fund. I'm renaming it. Instead of just the Benevolence Fund, I want to name it the Macedonian Fund, the Macedonian Benevolence Fund at Fairview Baptist. The reason for this is I, as I studied the scriptures and thinking about this, I remembered the second Corinthian chapters of 8 and 9. Now, in these two chapters, Paul is lifting up the Macedonian churches as a shining example of generous and cheerful givers. They had been collecting funds. They had, they had heard about the Jerusalem Christian churches who were going through a severe famine at the time, that were financially strapped, that didn't have enough money to buy food, and were in dire straits. And on their own, out of the generosity of their hearts, prompted by the Spirit of God, had been collecting a fund for these churches. Paul hears about this, and as he writes this letter back to this, these churches in Corinth, he applauds them, and he sets them up again as uh, an example for what we can do when we hear of brothers and sisters in need. So let me read a couple of verses of, and passages from these two chapters that talks about how we can be generous givers in difficult days. 
Paul begins the 8th chapter of 2 Corinthians talking about these Macedonian churches. He says this, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches in the midst of a very severe trial, with their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service of the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord, and then by the will of God, also to us. In a severe time of trial, these churches, these members of these churches, <laughs> were moved to give to help others. In this severe trial of uh, businesses being shut down, of our economy suffering, of some people that are just going to be affected more than some of the others, members of our congregation have said, let's help them. Just as God called upon these churches in Macedonia, God is calling upon the hearts of us to help others in need. <clears throat> Paul says their example, yes, it was out of the charity of their heart, out of their, uh, their affection for other Christians, but the ultimate example was Jesus Christ himself. Look with me at the 8th and, and ninth verses of the 8th chapter. Paul says, I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus was was rich in authority, in station, in power, the Son of God. But he became poor. He gave all he had to come to earth, to die on the cross for our sin, to be resurrected, to defeat death, in order that we may receive the grace of God, that we in the poverty of our sinful condition become rich and become children of God Almighty. Paul, then in the ninth chapter, he says uh, these wonderful verses, verses 6 through 11 of chapter 9, as he encourages generosity among Christians, encourages generous giving. Paul says, remember this, whoever sows reapingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I want you to think about contributing to this fund out of the generosity of your heart. No command, no pressure. Do what God tells you. Give first to your church, your tithe, and in abundance, overabundance of that, over your tithe, if you want to give to the Macedonian Benevolent Fund Relief 
I encourage you to do so. Now the fund will be maintained and, and operated by the same group that maintains and operates our Benevolence Fund. That is myself and the deacon officers. Right now, that's Butch Farley, Quickly Triblet, Rosemary Blankenship. I'm also asking Dean Holland, our food pantry director, to be a part of this team so that he can help with food requests that come in and to see if we have supplies in our pantry that could offset and help. <clears throat> I'm going to ask that this Macedonian fund focus on the sufferings from the coronavirus through December 31st, 2020, and any remaining funding after that will place in a designated Macedonian fund account. It'll be used for ongoing benevolent needs. I uh, encourage you to give uh, to this account. If you are in need, applicants for this account, those that need help, uh, will maintain a record of how the money is used, but we'll keep every person and every family anonymous as we do this. So if you if you have a need, if you find yourself financially strapped and hindered in need of food, shelter, clothing, bills, contact one of our pastors or contact our deacon share Rosemary Blankenship. We will pray with you and we'll work with you to see if we can help in any way. How can you give? There will be, one, a designation for the Macedonian Fund in our e-giving. You can pull that list down and designate an offering to that account. Or you can mail a check to the church office address, which we check regularly the mail. Designate your check to the Macedonian Fund. God loves a cheerful giver. What we sow, we also reap. And all of this goes to the glory of God, that through this effort, as Paul said, that your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. May each of you know the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ today. May your faith in God stay strong. May your hope be in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may you love others through the Holy Spirit that's within you. And remember, faith, hope, and love will last. The greatest of these is love. God bless you this day.